G'day, fellas. Welcome to a casted game of Age of Empires 4, where we've got not 95 bricks. NNL 95 bricks. I'm assuming it's from the Netherlands with a name like that. Spawning up in the north of the map. Going to be playing some Holy Roman Empire in a mirror against... You love him. You know him. He's that cheeky guy from... I think he's from Ohio. It's Fitz, bro. Spawning in the south of the map, and he is playing the Holy Roman Empire as well. So for anybody out of the loop, the Holy Roman Empire is one of the brand new civilizations that's been added in the most recent beta. Previously, only you were able to access the Mongols, the English, the Chinese, as well as a fourth civilization, which goes by the name of the Delhi Sultanate. But they've switched two of those out. You can't access the Mongols. You can't access the Delhi Sultanate. But you can now access these bad boys, the Holy Roman Empire. And they have been taking over. So you might have seen... You see a couple skips right there. That is because this game is so live. We're going to pause this game just very quickly. Just get a, a very slight pause in right now. And now we're going to go back. Oh, wh why is it Why is it playing so fast? I don't want you to play so fast. Just play at normal speed. That's fine for me. Normal speed is absolutely fine for us. We don't mind it. So this game is very live. This is quite literally happening right now. We'll take a look at, at the beginning and see how Fitzbro is doing. Fitzbro going for the early prelate. This is definitely the right decision. You want to be getting this prelate out as quickly as possible. So keep in mind with the Holy Roman Empire, okay? They come. Their villagers, I don't know why. I don't know whether it's bugged or what the deal is, but their villagers carry an extra 40% more resources, okay? And that stacks... If you get um, wheelbarrow, okay, a normal wheelbarrow villager can ca ca goes from 10 to 15 carry capacity, okay. A a Holy Roman Empire villager goes from uh, 14 up to 21 carry capacity. So it stacks. It's incredibly good. And in addition to that, not only does it stack with that, but it also stacks with this bonus, the inspiration bonus from the prelate. This little guy down here, you can see him standing idly next to the town center, slowly waving his hands in the air. He is, uh, he, he's casting a spell and he is, uh, well, casting a spell? Yeah, I guess casting a spell. He's, he is inspiring these, uh, these villagers and he's making them gather 40% faster. Yeah. Yeah. You heard that right. 40%. It's ridiculous. It is so silly. It's, it's a little bit ridiculous. Uh, I suspect it's probably going to get nerfed into the ground. I, I reckon that we'll probably see that reduced to like maybe 20%. I think it's probably going to be a bit more reasonable, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how they change it. They're normally pretty good with, with how they do it. We'll have a look at his opponent, though. We'll see how Fitzbro's enemy is doing. We've got 95 bricks up here in the north. He's, uh, he's doing not too bad, but no prelate out for him just yet. And one of the things to note that he doesn't actually have anybody on gold just yet. A little bit concerning because... Fitzbro's, if we take a look at Fitzbro's income, you can see he's already starting to gather that gold, uh, getting plenty of it in already. And uh, that's a bit of a difficult situation if your opponent's in, in age two and you're stuck in age one because your opponent can make military units, but you can't. All right, let's take a look back over at Fitzbro, see what he's up to. Obviously, Fitzbro doing his best to scout out the map. We might actually reveal all the map because one of you, or you guys will undoubtedly recognize it. There's a bit of a mini-map bug at the moment. Look at... Fi oh my god, look at Fitzbro. What a guy. Do you guys see that? He was cashing in right there. So instead of letting letting his villagers chop and... Or rather mine and slowly, you know, go in and, and drop off the gold, what he did is he cashed in. That's, that's what I call it. It's where you force the drop-off to happen. So really, really nice uh, play from Fitzbro there. Getting a pretty decent age-up time in here. Going to be starting to age up at 3 minutes 40, so pretty decent time. Going up with Arkan Chapel, and a curious place that he's put it as well. So not on any wood lines, he's only put it on the gold. But one of the things to note is if, if he's got a lot of villagers here, he's going to be saving a lot of uh, resources. So for anybody playing along at home, doesn't actually know what the Arkan Chapel does, let me tell you exactly what it does. So it's got mass inspiration. So remember we talked about the prelate down here. Oh gosh. We talked about the prelate and the way that it is inspiring the troops down here to the south. Oh my lord, that is loud. I think one of the things that we, we might need to do as as we head into these uh, these games is we need to adjust the audio. I feel like just turning speech and even sound effect volumes down is, is like pretty decent. Oh my, wh why does it speed us up like that? Hey, I don't want to watch live. I guess it wants us to watch live, so it, it, it speeds us up like that. So you can you can see the prelate down here. He is, uh, is he actually, he's not casting anything. Is he bugged right now? Fitzbro, you're going to wake your guy up. So he should be casting uh, down to the south here. Um, and it's 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 a little bit, it's, it's not working as intended right now. He, he should have that going. But essentially this wonder, the way it works, when you put your prelate inside, so you can garrison one prelate in here. 
it is going to provide that inspiration ability to every villager that enters this circle. Okay, and inspiration lasts for 30 seconds. So even if your villager just comes in to the circle just on the edge, then you're in a great spot. So what I like to do is I like to put a mill right on the edge of that circle. So if you, you can see right here, so maybe like in the later game or in the mid game, put your mill right there like that. All of the villagers that come in to drop off from outside are going to get buffed up when they come back inside. It's a very cheeky way and it's the right way. I think it's the right way to play it. We take a look back over at Fitzbro's opponent, Bricks. We see how he's doing. Doesn't look like he's got anything really going on. He's dropping a barracks down at the moment, but in the first stage, he's only going to have access to the pikemen, or rather the spearmen. And it's not going to be particularly helpful, especially if Fitzbro actually goes for men at arms, which is going to be the most common strategy that people are doing. Have a look at the macro here from Bricks. It definitely needs a little bit of work. Nowhere near as tight as Fitzbro's. That is to be expected. Fitzbro being a renowned pro in Age of Empires 3, and uh, obviously putting on quite a show for us. Now, one of the things to note, we did actually cover Don Artie's game on this map. Look how open this version of the map is compared to Don Artie's. So we are playing on Black Forest here. And one of the things to note is that obviously players have got this pond behind their base. Uh, e each respective player's got that, but look how open it is through the middle. It's almost like you can just walk to your enemy's base. I kind of wish every Black Forest map was like this. When, when we were watching Don, it was zigzagging like crazy. Don spawned up here in the right, his opponent over here on the left, and it was just zigzagging like crazy. But here it's a very direct route to your opponent, so I'm curious to see how Fitzbro is going to be using that, because typically on Black Forest, it's known for the ability to wall up, and, you know, the, the way the way to play is a little bit like Fat Slob does for anybody from Age of Empires 2 who might be watching, who's familiar with Fat Slob. You know, the classic head to the middle, wall up the middle, that old good, good fashion strategy just wouldn't really be possible here because not only is the middle just so wide but there's there's really a lot of routes into the base i feel like you just lose your villager if you went to do that we've got an age up wonder in queue for bricks so we'll take a look from his perspective see how he's doing a little bit of a late age up though going up at about seven minutes uh going up with the mine work palace so as you can see it acts like a blacksmith technology research here costs 25 percent less so pretty decent wonder i've worked it out exactly how much it needs or how much it, it's actually worth so you get 150 uh or you get 150 wood because obviously your blacksmith costs 150 wood so that's discounted you get that and it's also equivalent to about 400 resources in text just for your melee units so not including the ranged units but you know if you get melee attack if you get the the ranged armor and the melee armor as well as well as things like the the siege engineering and the infantry speed. Fitzbro going to be losing his scout here for free. Getting just a single tag on a spearman. Never a really good trade. It looks like the spearman actually going to be pushing out across the map. We'll take a look and see what of the map has been uncovered. A fair amount of the map has been uncovered by Brick. So he knows where his opponent is. Fitzbro actually doing a much better job of, of uncovering the map. But unfortunately losing his scout. He's going to know his opponent is pushing towards him. We'll take a look and see. He's dropping down at what appears to be an emergency barracks. Fitzbro really doing it. Uh, doing it tough over here, but uh, you can see. So one of the things to note is Fitzbro right now has got no villagers being inspired by this, uh, by the Arkan Chapel. So it, it's all about positioning when it comes to this. If, if he had gone for, say, down here, might be looking a lot better. But Fitzbro actually going for a fast castle. And uh, Town Center now going to be taking down a lot of these spears. Spears aren't, aren't known to be particularly strong raiders. And uh, evidently, you can see why that is, because they get absolutely shredded by the town center. Uh, a single spear going to be chasing in these three villagers out from over on the left side of Fitzbro's base. But Fitzbro doing an absolute beast of a strategy here, the Fast Castle. Now, you might be wondering what type of uh, wonder or what type of landmark Fitzbro is going up here with. Let's take a look. It's called the Regnitz Cathedral. Uh, and it is unique to the Holy Roman Empire, obviously, as all landmarks are. But... Uh, the idea is that essentially Fitzbro is going to be taking these relics from all around the map. So we've got a couple of relics here, a couple of relics up here. Uh, so three in total is what you need. And he's going to be putting them in this cathedral. So we can have a look how many prelates he's got out. It looks like he's only got one prelate out at the moment. It uh, doesn't look like he's got any more than that. Oh, I, I take that back. He's got two prelates out. At least two. Because yeah, we can see that one is buffing up. And then he's also got one inside here as well. So he's not doing too bad. Got three prelates out. So going to be bringing this back placing it inside the Regnitz Cathedral and feeling pretty good about himself as well because he's going to be able to beat his opponent to these relics. Obviously, his opponent also playing the Holy Roman Empire. He's going to be wanting to get those relics, but keep in mind, he can't actually get them until he reaches the Third Age. So 
He's not going to be leaving a whole lot of uh, of relics for his opponent. I think definitely if I was playing from Fitz's, Fitz's perspective and I know where all the relics are, let's take a look at Fitz's perspective uh, and just see. So even though you can't see on the minimap, he would be able to see that those relics exist and where they are. And so we've got this relic up to the north, this relic in the middle of the map, and then this relic down to the south. He's already captured that one relic. So I'd be going for like this one in the middle, like he's doing, and then head up the north, take this, and then you wall this relic in so your opponent can't get to it. Be really, really nasty. Then that way they're limited to this single relic that spawned in their base. It's a difficult spot for them. It is a real difficult spot for them because they want to be doing the exact same thing. It's 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 one of those things where it's like, it's it's a race. We actually see some more spears coming out now from his opponent. Fitzbro, a little bit slow to react here. Let's see how he goes about it. I think this is going to be an easy win for Fitzbro. Fitzbro looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the scores. So obviously in the top left-hand corner, there's a, a number of different options that you can... Uh, you can pull down here current resources, income per minute. Uh, but obviously, you've also got player score. So we can see Fitzbro up about 600 score at the moment. So it's definitely no surprise to see Fitzbro that far ahead in this game. Doing an doing absolute work here. So for anybody wondering what a relic actually gives you. Uh, so when you capture a relic and actually put it inside a building. So not the cathedral, but just any, uh, any specific... Um, uh, monastery, it's going to give you a trickle of gold. So you can see right here, we've got a trickle of gold. 300 gold a minute because there's three relics in here. Now, what it doesn't show you on this is that it's actually 900 a minute because of the 200% gold that you receive. So it's 200%. So the, the way that that works, maths, 100% is double, 200% triple. Uh, and so if we take a look at Fitzbro down the bottom here, you're going to see, look how fast it begins to climb his gold income per minute. 834 just watch it trickle. It's going to just, it's going to boost through the sky. You're just going to watch it go up. It's going to go insane. 884 a minute. You can see how fast that's coming in. And that's not just from the villagers over here. That is also from the relics. He has the equivalent of nine relics in here right now. So really a huge amount of gold income coming in there. In addition to that, Fitzbro also looking to capture the sacred site. So the sacred site's the exact same mechanic for them. Uh, they, they are like relics in that when you've got them, you're going to be getting in a trickle of gold. Uh, so we see right there. Uh, and so taking a look right now at the um, at, at the castle, you can see that Fitzbro has got no villages on gold, but he's sitting 1,078 per minute. So that's going to come back down to 900, or at least it should come back down to 900. We'll take a look at Fitzbro, how he's doing. Actually going for the boar out in the middle here. He's got a villager that's going to potentially be going down. Fitzbro, is he going to lose a villager? He does lose a villager. The villager does go down to the boar, and boar doing its best to, to say, hey, Fitz, you can take me, but... Uh, you can take my, you can take my hide, but you'll never take my spirit. I think that's what he said. That that was pretty good, Drongo. I'll I'll, I'll give myself a pat on the back for that one. That was that was a funny one. Uh, Fitzbro now pushing in to the enemy base, and look at the swings coming out right now from the men at arms. Men at arms looking pretty darn decent. We we take a look at just how much armor they've got. They've got four armor, and now they're going to begin sieging down the archery range. They've decided to fall back, and look at the size of those swings coming out from them. They just they look like doppel soldiers. They're just absolutely impressive. I love the look of those maces, the way they swing. But keep in mind, when you do have this upgrade with the maces, they actually have a reduced attack speed. They don't attack as fast because of that mace upgrade. So something to consider. It's a bit of a trade-off. They do get more damage, but at the same time, it's less attack speed. So they're going to be connecting and doing a bit more damage. But now Fitz looking pretty decent. So he's taken the first sacred site. So keep in mind, you can see down here in the bottom left-hand corner. So... We've got the Fitzbro's income, so it says 300 a minute, times that by 3, okay, because of the bonus, so 900 a minute, and then he gets 100 gold a minute as well from the sacred site. So each sacred site you capture, it's 100 gold a minute. So if he goes up and captures this one, which I think he's heading towards at the moment, uh, he's actually captured a fourth relic. He might have to go put that in a monastery somewhere, or maybe he's bringing it to the front. Oh, oh, are we going to see a Fitzbro monk bomb right now? I think we might. Oh, this is exciting. Fitzbro moving to the front right now. Oh, 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 oh. Never mind. He made a monastery on the front line. He's just going to put the relic in the monastery. I got excited there. So Fitzbro going to be heading up to 1,100 gold a minute now. Passive income of 1,100. Is is this guy, does he have like, what is his secret? Does he have like 3090s in this castle? Like how is he mining that much gold right now? That is ridiculous. Fitzbro looking pretty good, healing up as well. His prelates uh, doing a pretty decent job here. Now, keep in mind, these guys as well, if you get the... There is a, uh, a technology down here called Inspired Warriors. So prelates can inspire 
Military units improving their armor by plus one and damage by 15%. So if you get this bonus right here, your prelates are actually able to buff up your military and able to get nice and high base armor. So you can get a ridiculous amount. So for anybody playing along at home, uh, let's have a look at the blacksmith. Is there a blacksmith? There, there we go, blacksmith. So we don't have tier two uh, upgrades just yet. Only tier one ranged uh, armor. Uh, and we've, uh, we've got, sorry, we've got one out of three on that. My bad. Hold on. I'm, I'm a bit confused. That's the second one coming in right now. We don't even have the first tier in yet for Fitzbro. Uh, so he's he's got... You can see there he's got five ranged armor, four melee armor. So prelates are going to buff that up as well. So with this, prelates will increase uh, the total armor by plus one on both sides. So you could potentially get a an armor of seven in the castle age. So that's a pretty decent... Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty decent amount of armor when you consider, right, like, let's say, hypothetically, seven armor, because he's got one armor up... one ranged armor upgrade, okay? And then he's still got one more to come. So eight. And then ninth armor is going to be coming in from the prelates. We take a look at his opponent who's making archers. They do six damage. They do six damage. It is unreal how much armor that is. So they're going to be doing only one damage to them. Now, keep in mind, even if they get the upgrades, let's say hypothetically, if there was a blacksmith here, I don't actually see a blacksmith, uh, which to me says that there's no additional bonuses here. But let's say that he got both of the, the plus one attacks, then he, he'd still only be sitting on eight. And so as a result, he's still only scratching him, just doing one damage. And that's the reason why these bad boys are so strong, because of this really high armor. Going to be pushing forward now. The archer's looking to pick off these villagers. Let's see what Fitzbro can do, whether he can push in and look at potentially taking them out. Look at the swings beginning to go down. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time we enter the cinematic mode as Fitzbro begins to march upon his enemy, chasing him into the battle, but deciding to pull out. Fitzbro, Fitzbro, what are you doing? Get in there. Get your maces going, mate. What are you doing, Fitz? You're driving me crazy over here. I'm heading back out of the cinematic mode. Do him, Fitz. Do him. Exactly. General Valerian knows what's up, but we've actually got a little bit of a, a keep going down from Fitzbro at the moment. So keep in mind, the keep is like a castle in Age of Empires 2 or a fort in Age of Empires 3. Look at the range on this bad boy, just firing off arrows off into the distance. Plenty of range, and it's actually within range of the uh, archery range. It's going to be taking it down ever so slowly. You can actually see it's got 50 versus ranged armor, but uh, I think it's shooting about... 17 arrows a second at the moment. It, it's uh, it's it's pretty unreal exactly how much damage it's doing. Uh, we can actually see here, so it's got a 12 bow. Uh, but uh, we've got a, a knight out on the field now. Look how fast that knight is going down to the the uh, the castle. Really, just doing it very quickly. Fits probably in a pretty decent spot because right now, if we take a look at the uh, at the sacred tracker, Fitzbro is on track to actually win this game. He's got two sacred sites captured. And that means it's only a matter of time right now until Fitzbro actually wins the game because of holding the sacred the, the sacred sites. Uh, when it comes to his opponent, his opponent has got to push through and has to capture these. So how do you capture them? You have to use a prelate yourself to take control of them, but to force your enemy off them, you only need to have units inside this circle. So if, even if he brought up, say, a single horseman onto this, then Fitzbro would have to react and have to force that horseman off or at least bring in a unit of his own. Uh, gonna continue right now. Fitzbro looks like... Was that a mangonel I just heard? I think I heard it. Or is... Has he got an upgrade? I, I thought I heard a mangonel. Did you guys hear that? Oh, oh, there there we go. Here we go. We got a counterweight trebuchet, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there is no snaring in Age of Empires 4, so it's important to remember that when you see uh, base unit speeds of, say, 1.24 movement speed over here... Uh, that is not going to include a snare, uh, potentially on, say, we've got some... Ooh, we, we actually have some crossbows over here. Oh, gosh, what's happening with my camera? Uh, hold on, I need to fix my camera right now. Okay, the, the reason why is because I'm holding down the middle button, and you see how I'm moving the camera gently like that? It, it kind of bugs out a little bit, so we've got to be a bit more careful with it in the way that we do it. Trebuchet over here to the left, going to begin firing at this castle and just unleashing. I thought I heard a mangonel. It turned out it was actually a trebuchet. Now, one of the things to note... Uh, he has the ability to issue emergency repairs. Let's see about how he goes for it. Fitzbro actually diving straight for this trebuchet. He says, you know what? I've had enough of your bad business. We're taking the trebuchet down. Downtown. Oh my lord. Why does it do that? That, that is frustrating. Trebuchet just gets evaporated into wood. Sacred Site has now been neutralized down to the south. So that's it. The Sacred Site victory is over for Fitzbro. Uh, he doesn't have a chance at, at winning it unless he recaptures that site. So it's consider that it's it's been taken by his opponent. 
He's going to have to recapture it if he wants a chance at that Sacred Sight victory. Prelate's now in the base. I'm curious if he's got the Inspiration ability. It doesn't look like he does have it. We'll check his, uh, his Monastery. He doesn't have Inspired Warriors, so just bringing them to heal. We take a look at, uh, at just how nice they look as well. Chilling out with their beautiful robes there. You can really see the detailing on that on those robes. Let's move a little bit closer. Look at that. Really looks quite nice, doesn't it? Fitzbarrow just uh, doing him dirty at the moment. We'll take a look from his perspective and, and see what Bricks has actually got when it comes in the way of units. He's got 47 uh, economic units and 18 military units. But where are those, those military units? They don't seem to be any... Oh, you know where they are? They're coming back from that raid down to the south. So now they're coming back and just look at them scratching these. Doing barely any damage. Oh, actually, I take that back. There are crossbows in here now. Crossbows are going to be doing quite a lot of damage. So 20 damage in total. Uh, so the, these units are heavy, heavy melee infantry. You can see the crossbowmen here get a bonus of plus six versus heavy. But they are going to melt to the maces of the men at arms. That was a lot of a, a, lot of, uh, a tongue twister right there. So... You do need at least an even number, and you pro probably want to micro your units away from these guys. Keep in mind, 1.25 movement speed on the uh, on the archers versus 1.24 on on the infantry. So they are quite quick. But a difficult spot now for Bricks. It looks like he is uh, he's not having fun. He may have uh, may have fallen out of favor with the the holy Roman gods because uh, his base is now belonged to Fitzbro. Fitzbro in a bit of a Bit of a, uh, a decent spot here as well. Going to begin raiding the town center of the opponent before it gets up. And look at the villagers just going down right here. You see them just eating away at their insides. And now we've got some Lanskanex coming out. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I know all you German guys in the YouTube comments are going to be like, Drongo, Drongo, that's not how you say it. This is how you say it. And then you're going to link to like some obscure website about pronunciation. I'm just going with Lanskanex. I hope that that's close enough. If it's not, I apologize. Take a look at just how Fitzbro is dealing with these Lance Connects. This is really the Battle of the Bold. Who wins out of these two guys? Lance Connects, did you see that? They did a running jump. They literally ran and threw and like hammered their swords away. They're actually cleaning them up pretty effectively. So they've got 17 damage. So they bypass a significant amount of armor. Uh, and by the same token, they're, they're actually quite weak. Look at how much damage they're taking. Uh, so when you compare them over to the Men at Arms, so Men at Arms have got a base of... Oh, that's 20 torch damage. I was going to say, they've got 20 damage? That's a lot. I'm curious if we can actually see uh, what the damage is. Wait, is Fitzbro's gone to Imperial? Fitzbro's in Imperial. Oh my lord, I just realized. Okay, Fitzbro's over here. So they've got 19 attack on them, the, the men at arms. They do a lot of damage. Fitzbro running into a bit of a problem right there, and the problem turned out to be himself, but now going to be outnumbering his opponent pretty handily and going to be dealing very effectively with those units. Keep in mind, these are elite. These are fully upgraded bad boys right now. Fitzbro looking in a commanding lead right now. Enemy is approaching Sacred Sight victory, and once again, Fitzbro is looking like he's going to be able to complete this game. He's got multiple win conditions right now. Sacred Sights are up, and on, in addition to that, he's also going to be taking down landmarks of his opponent. We take a look at the landmark tracker right now. A single landmark remains for his enemy, and he's going to be, again, shelling it, but Fitzbro takes the game. Congratulations. Go over to Fitzbro. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed this game, make sure you go check out Fitzbro on his YouTube channel. There's plenty more Age of Empires 4 content over there. You can catch the first person perspective of this game and see exactly how Fitzbro did. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.